Okay, so uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Paolo Castis, and I am um, uh, co founder and uh, CEO here in Caracol. And this morning, I will try to summarize a little about our company. And Caracol provides extreme additive manufacturing solution um, on a big scale and with uh, high technical materials and technopolymers for advanced industrial application. And uh, our value proposition is um, basically our integrated process that is based on uh, a deep knowledge in the 3D printing um, process, uh, which allow us actually to uh, focus on the requirements, on the application of our cl clients and make a top-down approach from um, from the desires of our of our clients to the um, uh, manufacturing strategy. So uh, we are able to actually do that because we um, first of all we develop our uh, main technology, so the uh, robotic three D printing system that we will analyze. Um, just in uh, the next minutes and um, because we actually use all the most uh, uh, innovative design techniques that um, allow us to optimize the the 3d printing solution uh, from the project to the to the piece so uh, we use uh, mainly this kind of um, project uh, approach from uh, um we have the first part we call it the demo project from which we start with uh, let's say a, a consulence uh, approach to the to the design problem to the client problem and guiding him to actually select uh, which could be the the best parts to to actually 3d print and from that we pass through an engineering phase an engineering and design phase in which we uh, optimize the pieces for the additive manufacturing um, process. We, from that, we pass to the production uh, part, to the production phase of the project. So we make uh, what we call a proof of concept, uh, concept. So uh, a prototype and uh, usually also a pre-series of the pieces. Uh, we test it, and after the validation, we go to the production phase. So that could go uh, also up to thousands of units uh, in depending of the technology which uh, and on the on the scale of the piece. As I was saying for actually um, use the, the most to, of the potential of 3D printing, um, we based our, um, uh, our knowledge on the on the design phase, so uh, from the paradigmatic design tool to the computational design to the algorithm design, and in connection with um, the classical analysis tool for the FEM and the topological um, analysis, we are able actually to um, produce uh, a design before the the actual production phase that we can. Uh, study and test for the for the uh, for example mechanical requirements and be able to uh, match the the requirements of the clients and of the piece that we have to to make. Uh, we work with a wide range of three uh, D printing technologies, so from um, professional three D printers, FDM three D printers, and SLA three D printers with which we have a pretty big uh, working volume up to one cube meter more or less and from then we uh, we pass to the robotic additive manufacturing system this is the um, the main point that actually uh, distinguishes us from from our competitors so uh, we have uh, now actually we have five robots in house and five robots that uh, could reach position up to four meters. So we have a very big uh, working volume and two meters. 
and we in the in the next uh, in the next year we will also install uh, a robot on um, on a rail uh, a rail that is up to 12 meters so we will increase a lot our working volume the the big scale is uh, where we we work and where we want to go um, for for our production and and strategic and strategic um, issues. Let's talk about a little about um, our robotic system. So uh, we use robotic arms that actually are used in the in industry since decades, and we use in a very different ways since than uh, the the usual ones. And um, the the first big um, difference among the the standard 3D printers is that the robot uh, have a, a six axis freedom of movement. So uh, thanks to this uh, capability, we can actually print very complex uh, parts and be able to have a really high flexibility in terms of. Uh, uh, geometries that all the other machines those, um, do not have. Another thing is, uh, of course, the, the working scale that we can reach. We have robots that, as I was saying, goes with a four uh, meter uh, reach. So uh, we can print four meter pieces in, in once. And um, Another very important point is the raw material that we use because we work not from uh, um, filament, not from resin, not from anything but the pellets. So the, the, the basic raw material of all the um, plastic manufacturing systems. So um, the, the price and of operating and of the material cost is really low so we can print big parts uh, keeping the um, the application affordable for, for, for our clients. Uh, with this kind of material um, we uh, we can use uh, from um, the most technical and advanced the technopolymers family uh, from the composite polymers so pellets with uh, carbon fiber, with glass fiber. And um, another important thing is that uh, we have a very strong connection and it's one of the pillars actually of Caracol, the sustainable aspect. Of course, 3D printing is strongly connected um, with, this, uh, with this. And uh, using pellets, uh, this fact allows us to um, use a a huge quantity of recycled material and we actually do a lot of projects with uh, with this and we take care about uh, all the the process uh, also with our clients so from the um, the collecting of the waste to the recompounding of the material of our clients and after that we use this material for making the projects for our clients and this is a very, very good, innovative uh, example of how the 3D printing uh, techniques could be uh, perfect for circular economy systems. Uh, this, with this material, of course, we uh, serve quite a lot of um, very interesting industries from the automotive and motorsport to the aerospace, our main focus in this in this moment and in the next years, uh, the energy and the oil and gas industry, the marine industry, uh, industrial machinery in general, the design and art, and also uh, medical devices. We um, prototype and produce pieces for, for them because of uh, with our system, we are using uh, this kind of polymers that uh, are um, has really um, good mechanical um, mechanical characteristics, and for example, we do metal replacement, and um, uh, with this, it's uh, 
uh, it's a very important thing for uh, replacing the same requirements than the previous products in this kind of um, uh, of industries. Um, we offer also a wide range of uh, services to to this kind of industries from, as I was saying, the design and the concept developing uh, at the first place, uh, go, going through the engineering phase, the the prototypes, the 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 production phase, and uh, all the the things in the material characterization and recycling uh, process that I was talking about before, um, supporting and um, uh, in, uh, of internalizing um, 3D printing industry machines in uh, in our clients' facilities, and training workshop connected, of course, with uh, with the uh, last activity and. Uh, this is another thing that actually uh, distinguishes us from the other because uh, we do not sell the machine, but we sell our um, our service. So we install our machines from um, from the three um, D printers to the robotic system in uh, in facilities of our clients, and actually we um, handle all the uh, design part, all the um, uh programmation of this machine from um, uh, from our, our facility and actually the, the client just need to activate the the machine um without the need of knowing in deep the the, the 3d printing process so the clients has the machine inside the piece inside and the knowledge still remain in caracol that is uh the most efficient efficient way for the client to produce in the better way the um, the their pieces and now i'll show you um an example of uh of one of our production this is a large scale aerospace tool application uh the problem was that uh our client had this um uh, big part that was very heavy that was has a lot of uh, pieces to be assembly uh, the lead time of the piece was uh, quite high so uh, almost one month one month to deliver the piece and it was making in uh, from um, from metal with a milling process and from from the blocks so very high um, expensive um manufacturing technique and so he he had a, a a time and cost problem so we propose him to to take the project and to study the, the application and we find out what that this um this large scale jig for for uh, drilling and trimming of the aircraft deliferring panels uh, could be made with composite material that uh, were sufficient for the for the mechanical requirements of the of the pieces. We uh, decide so the the material with which we were going to uh, use for for the for the application. So it was a composite material, a polypropylene with uh, glass fiber. And we 3D print the the pieces. We redesign actually the pieces also, and we study the um, the technical the technical uh, specification through our softwares. And after that, to reach the um, very high uh, tolerances, uh, dimensional tolerances, we uh, mill just the um, the the full side. And um, we reach uh, one point uh, zero point one millimeters in dimensional tolerances and a surface roughness of one point six uh, uh, microns. So actually, uh, the same um, stuff that you can reach directly with milling uh, metal from the block. So we we digitalize this workflow, and we with this approach we enable our client to have a huge uh, save in terms of cost in terms of uh, uh, leading time in terms of uh, 
uh, weight of the pieces because for example another detail that is not mentioned in this in this slide is that the pieces the piece before was uh, weighing uh, like uh, 700 kilos and uh, with uh, with our production the the part was weighing like one tenth so uh, almost 80 kilograms doing exactly the same job for them so uh, very nice uh, example of uh, of our kind of applications and the uh, dimension of this piece were like uh, uh, one meter and a half per one meter per half a meter so not exactly uh, the, um, the usual dimension in 3D printing. We 3D print the part in one piece. And, and this is actually something concrete to tell you about, about Caracol. And we are working uh, in, uh, in these fields a lot. So we produce a lot of these kind of jigs. And um, we are also uh, studying new, uh, new application. Thank you for, for your time. And of course, if you have some question, I'm here for, for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paolo. Um, now, well, we have some time for questions, if there are any from the audience. Thanks, Mirto. Thanks, Paolo, and all the speakers. Um, I have a, a quick question uh, for the last uh, presentation from Paolo from Caracol uh, regarding process monitoring and control. So, as you know, from IMEN, we are very, very focused on, on database optimization of manufacturing processes. And of course, additive manufacturing is a very, very well example since it's a very complex uh, manufacturing process indeed. So, from your point of view, uh, are you are you currently working on specific process monitoring and control? For example, on the, on the nozzle, are you working with heat control or pressure, or yes. heating also the substrate somehow? Um, to what extent uh, to have this process monitoring and control really provides higher quality products? What's your your perspective on? Yeah, you, you, you touched a very good point, of course. We, uh, first of all, we develop, uh, when, when I say we develop our robotic uh, 3D printing system, I, I mean that uh, we develop the hardware, the software, and also the automation of uh, all the robotic cells. So we work in all the aspects internally to develop something that actually we can control 100%. And... Um, uh, we are uh, we have different uh, also some patterns on uh, on what you were saying. So the the monitoring of uh, uh, of all the process and a real time response also mm -hmm. on um, on what is actually happening in the in the reality. So what you were saying the um, uh, the flux of the um, of the uh, extrusion, the temperature um the temperature of the layer uh on which i am dropping the the new layer the new material and the speed according to the the geometry and the part of the geometry uh the refrigeration of the piece these are all uh stuff that we are in uh, in developing uh, uh internally so we think uh that to actually deliver um pieces that are the, the best and that fits the best with all the studies that you do before. Because of course, as we all know, the um, FEM studies on the 3D printed parts are something that is not so usual and that you can do in some kind of ways, because of course, uh, uh, you are working with uh, anisotropic uh, pieces and production techniques. So our aim is actually to uh, reduce to zero the difference between the performance uh, among the three axes when we 3D print. So uh, being able to have the piece with the same uh, technical performance in all the direction. And um, you find me uh, uh, 
uh, agree with the, with what you're saying. So definitely, we are working on the, on that, and we are working also on the environment in which we put our robotic uh, arm to work on. So uh, we work on the, the um, on the printing bed with some strategies for mechanical grip. Uh, we work on the cell, so having um, a thermo and a drying cell controlled, so we can actually work in an environment that is uh, the best for for the material. Uh, we um, uh, dehumidify the, the the material before printing. We have mm -hmm. an automatic alimentation system, so we can print for days. Uh, with our with our system, and so we we try actually uh, knowing uh, really well the process and so the potential and also the limits of the three D printing, especially on the layer by layer three D printing. Uh, we try to um, consider all the aspects to deliver uh, a, a dimensional uh, good piece a uh, technical good piece and then when it's need we uh, when it's needed we um, connect our kind of um, of, uh, of work so the 3d printing with uh, uh, for example the milling like in the in the case i showed you before uh, with the um, lamination and we are uh, internalized this uh, this kind of uh, of uh, of hardware to do everything internally, so be able to deliver this uh, this kind of pieces with very high uh, demanding requirements. So, for example, one tenth of millimeter of uh, dimensional tolerances that in three D printing is something very difficult to to achieve, and um, and that's all. So, yeah, <laughs> we, we we are not just focusing on the extrusion. Let's say like maybe. Uh, most of uh, the 3D printing companies and uh, realities does, but on the whole. So, okay. yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Can I make two comments regarding, regarding data spaces? So, and so mm -hmm. um, first of all, additive manufacturing is one of the major application domains for data spaces. Especially when we have an ecosystem of uh, or a battery of uh, additive manufacturing companies uh, to be uh, to be integrated in order to uh, see which is the best offer uh, regarding the, um, the the printing of some of some parts. This is something there is a use case. Uh, a very important use case, uh, which is uh, in the International Data Space Association, uh, which is uh, really demonstrating how data spaces uh, could help this uh, manufacturing as a service or uh, uh, 3D printing as a service uh, uh, scenario in, uh, in a supply chain. Regarding instead the, the data which is produced by uh, industrial IoT, one of the most important application of data spaces is uh, in data quality. It is uh, how to improve the quality we, of the data which are generated by industrial IoT systems, by sensors and by machinery, in order to increase this quality, improve this quality, and to avoid the garbage in garbage out syndrome for instance, for advanced applications of artificial intelligence. So these are two applications uh, uh, of data spaces, so which are uh, quite relevant to what uh, uh, to what Paolo just uh, uh, described. 